we just crossed the line to the point where we now have negative real rates again. So if you look at like historically, basically the last, I don't know, several decades <laughs> until the 08, 09 global financial crisis, we always had what you would call positive real rates, which means that your rate of inflation is lower than your interest rate. And that means that your cost of borrowing is higher than how quickly your money is being devalued through and or the cost of goods is inflating. And the problem with a negative real interest rate is that if the cost of goods are going up so quickly, like as an example, a TV or a t-shirt or a car or your groceries, and you can borrow money for less than that, which you can't obviously, but the perceived environment is that the banks or financial institutions can borrow money for less money than the rate of inflation. Then it becomes a, like the financially intelligent thing to do, or like the right technical move to actually spend all of your money, right? If for example, you could borrow money at 5% and the cost of some non-perishable food item or a piece of clothing or a stove was going up 8% per year, it would actually make sense for you to borrow as much money as you possibly could and buy a bunch of stoves and then sell them next year at an 8% premium, right? And you'd make that 3% spread. As you get into a more negative real rate environment, like we, we were only in positive real rate environment for like less than a year, about a year. As you get into a negative real rate environment, it starts to distort and create a, a, a ir irrationality on the lending side. And this could potentially lead to looser credit terms and actually growth in the debt side of things, which is what fuels growth in the real estate market. Same thing from Oxford Economics 